Good evening, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. Today is December 26, 2023. Another daily analysis is starting with S&P 500 daily chart. So here is S&P 500 daily chart. Let me zoom in a bit. All right. Um, we had another uptick today. So we are in uh, bullish seasonality Santa Claus rally. So right now, market is just the forming of war another higher high, a potential scenario is going to be, we are going to challenge this top, which is all time high, another time here, probably for the next uh, two, three days, uh, even next week, we can challenge this area and we can get to nominal all time high. However, I would say uh, all traders and investors needs to be cautious because uh, everyone is piling on the long side. This rally is kind of like impressive rally. It is very, very substantial rally. Uh, we are due for corrective move and for sure, um, um, not for sure, but uh, most probably in January, specifically second week, third week and fourth week of January, uh, we'll see some kind of like a pullback. A pullback could be a great buying opportunity still. A uh, bull is not over. So lots of people are just panicking and uh, this rally is kind of like a stop hunting, lots of shorts. And uh, this is very, very nice short squeeze. And when we get above this trend line, market is just carved up nicely to the upside. Uh, but uh, any corrective move to here to 45, 4,600, that would be great buying opportunity, I should say. Higher high is coming. And uh, I'm, going, I'm just preparing a forecast for 2024, which is coming end of this week. So make sure watch that one as well. So a potential scenario is going to be a good, 2024 at least for first half of the 2024 so make sure watch that one as well uh, which is coming this weekend um stochastic wise we are pretty um in overbought condition and uh, there's nothing wrong with it the only problem or issue uh, that i see here divergence in macd however this divergence is not following up with rsi and is not following up with stochastic however imi shows a divergence here as well so uh, when we have see um something like this which all indicators are not following each other so that's uh, that's kind of like a very very weak one so we should just uh, kind of like keep an eye on this if you see all indicators showing divergence and we are at the very important level of resistance level of reversal we should see some kind of like a pullback as i said second week third week of january we should see some pullback for the market Moving on to NASDAQ, which was kind of like a positive today as well. So NASDAQ, uh, this is a weekly chart. Let me just uh, go to daily chart here. So daily chart, we had a positive day, not a bad session. Um, we are seeing kind of like a small divergence in RSI here between these two tops and also the bigger divergence here in, Mac in MACD. So when we see something like this, we should say, okay, so NASDAQ is signaling probably is going to be the first one is going to have a corrective move to the downside. However, this correction, we can get all the way back down here to this institutional level, which is gonna be 15,000 to 16,000 area. So if I wanna say exact number is gonna be a 16,000 area, which is a 15,000, a 700 to 16,000 area. So we should be kind of like interesting uh, to see how this corrective move can give us a buying opportunity, which I believe it's gonna be a good buying opportunity at least for the first half of the year. Moving on to Dow Jones, which was kind of like a positive today as well. So Dow had uh, finished uh, kind of like a steal. We are uh, below this uh, December 20th, but nice candle. So, so we got into this important reversal. We are pretty close to new all-time high. If we get a positive day tomorrow, I should say we can see new all-time high for Dow Jones. And uh, there is no ceiling on the top. However, this area, all the way to 40,000, I should say, this is going to be the area that I'm looking for, a top for Dow in 2024 even. So we are kind of like a pretty close to the top and we are kind of like informing and top information. However, the top is not going to be tomorrow, next week or next month. I would say 2024 is going to be a top for the market. And especially first, first half of the 2024, it's going to be up below 40,000. And that's why I'm just putting this box. And if, again, make sure watch uh, stock market forecast, which is coming enough this week. And I'm going to explain more about this. However, 
this is the area that I'm looking for a reversal for a corrective move uh, to the downside. And then we can see another higher high correction and then higher high. Nice search to, uh, to new all time high. A potential scenario is going to be 39,000, 40,000, and then reversing to the downside. So we will see how it goes for the market. Moving on to gold, uh, which was kind of like a positive today, and nicely going back up, a good candle. And gold can um, outperform the stock market in 2024. I believe uh, we will see some kind of like a choppy, sloppy uh, next, uh, I should say, several weeks uh, until the end of January. But after this consolidation forms pretty nicely in a weekly chart as well, we should see and we should be ready for a major breakout to the upside. And that breakout could be a great, great rally. I should say uh, it's going to be a 10%, 20% rally to the upside. A 2250 is going to be my level for gold, at least for a short term or first target. But uh, 2500 is going to be accessible and available a possible scenario, but 2250, that's going to be my first initial target for gold. And I believe this happens uh, in first half of 2024. So again, next couple of weeks, we should see some kind of like a choppy sloppy here, but uh, this choppy sloppy could give us a great consolidation, good pattern, good weekly pattern to the upside for a new all-time high. Uh, moving on to crew of each, uh, kind of like a beneficiary from geopolitical tensions, especially in Red Sea and in Middle East. Right now, crude has a nice comeback to the upside. And I should say, if crude gets above this $80, we should see some kind of like a bottom. And this is kind of like interesting because I would say um, if we get above this $80, we should see some kind of like a 90, a pullback to 130 again we are going to challenge the top but if it doesn't happen and if crude just reversing uh from a below as as long as we are below 90 and if crude doesn't reach out to 90 and reversing to the downside again getting back to this uh, 63 we should see 50 dollars coming down the road for crude so crude is kind of like a choppy consolidation and this is kind of like oversold after this overbought, very stretched to the upside. We are just getting to important level, which is going to be 61 to 63. And right now, crude is just in no man's land, I should say. So uh, we should see some uh, more indication from crude. If it gets again above 80, any pullback could be good buying opportunity to 90. If it gets above 90, 100 and 130 is coming down the road. But if we cannot get to 90 and reversing to downside and again double test this low around 63 dollar then we should see some kind of like a uh, spike down to 50 to 53 dollars so we will see how it goes with crude all right moving on to individual names starting with yield so yield had a downtick today so a uh, potential scenario for yield is going to be, we are going to see another 4% and then um, getting strength. So we can see some kind of like a strong pullback to 4.50. Uh, and then it can go down again. So yield is going to get weaker and weaker. Um, I believe this is the top for yield. We are not going to challenge this. Even if inflation comes back, we are not going to get to this high here. So yield is in a topping formation. And as you see here, we are kind of like a very, very oversold. And any reversal here to 4.50%, uh, it could be kind of like a good selling opportunity for a next move to the downside, even to this uh, 370 to 380. So we'll, we'll see how it goes with yield. On the other side, Treasury, I did like an a uptick today. And not about price action, Treasury is nicely working out for self like uh, this is kind of like the bottom i should say this is not going to be touched again in 2024 any pullback to this area i'm just looking for a major pullback any pullback to this area would be a fantastic buying opportunity for a great run to 100 um 205 so we will see how it goes uh for treasury but uh 105 um, could be kind of like available specifically in 
the first three months in 2024. VIX is coming down to the sharp decline. So um, um, it was kind of like uh, positive, but coming down sharply. So sellers took control. I should say another lower low with the divergence. That would be a fantastic buying opportunity for VIX, especially when we are getting to second week of fourth uh, to fourth week of January. We should see some stock market corrective move to the downside and then VIX um, I can spike up nicely. Uh, Dixie uh, coming down, coming along with a crew, uh, coming along, sorry, with yield. So we just break through this uh, support here. And this means uh, more lower low is coming for Dixie. And we can get to this for a double bottom here, somewhere around 100. And then we can see some sharp pullback all the way to 102, 103. And that would be it. I should say that would be it. It's going to be the top for the dollar. And dollar cannot, I should say, uh, at least in my radar, dollar cannot go above 107 anymore, anytime soon. Moving on to talk, uh, technology, uh, which is FANG. Um, this is our magma indicator. Magma consolidating here. Uh, for a uh, fourth uh, days, uh, it's not bad, not good. Um, so far, holding up pretty well. Apple on the other side just roll over. So you see, Apple is leading to the downside. Even when we are in Santa Claus rally, Apple is just forming to the downside. I should say, if we break through below 188, Apple could be into trouble. So it can go all the way down to 180, even lower. I would say. If Apple goes to 150, 160, that would be great buying opportunity. Still can happen. So don't get in wrong. So still can happen this one. And if it happens, that would be great buying opportunity. Amazon, just a consolidation, nothing bad, nothing good. Doji bar, Meta, dollar 44 cents up, not a bad price action. And Microsoft, eight cents up. So Microsoft is kind of like a lagging. So you see that this is a pattern. If it gets below, 365, I should say any pullback could be a sell to 340 and then sell all the way down to 300. So we will see how it goes for Microsoft, which has got to be a good buying opportunity. Google is the next three cents up, kind of like a top information. Again, momentum was dead. And Netflix, a $4.43 up. Tesla, a good breakout. So you see that Tesla is just getting into this uh, supply area. And this supply area is very, very important. Uh, we can see some kind of like a pullback. And don't be afraid uh, to to see a pullback or to analyze with a pullback with Tesla. Again, if it goes down, I should say this one can go all the way down to here, which is going to be the third low. Uh, and this low could be a great buying opportunity for the upside. Uh, I'm just looking for this correction. To be honest, this correction could be a great buying opportunity for many cases. Semiconductor, SMH, which is a rock star for today. So semis are a strong. There's nothing wrong with market. SMH hit the all-time high today. So semis are a strong. Based on the news, so Israel just, uh, I think they funded a $3 billion to Intel to do the, uh, I think to do, um, uh, to manufacture semiconductor in Israel. So that's why that news kind of like a positive for semiconductor industry. And uh, they just uh, pushed uh, to higher. Taiwan Semiconductor was uh, strong as well. So dollar 30 cents up. AMD $3.81 up. Pretty good. So AMD, I remember we just bought it here. It sold out here and 20%, uh, but right now it's uh, 40%. So see that how a market, a beautiful uh, pattern works in the market. So this is kind of like a W pattern with a good bull flag in, in a weekly chart. So when these uh, two coming together, I thought that that's a good bottom, a 20%, a good uh, resistance here for, for us. So we can just delete this one or we can change it to a full bit to the buy side. However, uh, nice search for AMD. NVIDIA, another uh, uptick today, $4.49. Texas Instrument, $2.50. $2.57 up, a good price action for Texas. We bought this one, we flip it uh, AMD to our Texas position. I remember we bought a lot here and right now we are good. We are good in uh, in profit, so uh, no complaint at all. Uh, Lamb Research, new all-time high today, 
$796 and pretty good day for semis in overall. Moving on to XLF, which is a financial spider, 15 cents up. The financials are pretty strong. They just break, uh, I think actually they broke above this resistance. And this is kind of like interesting because we are seeing some kind of like a good price action. Here's the low, here's the higher low, here's the higher low. And you know which one I'm talking about, leapfrog, but already broken above this. So I should say any pullback could be a great buying opportunity for financials. I believe they can hit new all-time high this year of financials. So they're pretty strong. And XLF is pretty strong as well. So KBE, um, 61 cents up, a pretty good pattern for KBE. Regional banks are good as well. KRE, uh, sorry, KBE, uh, large cap banks, uh, KRE, um, they are kind of like a lagging. But as you see here, uh, we just uh, got back again to the bullish momentum. Uh, 56 of 36 is coming down the road for a big resistance. JP Morgan, a nice move to the upside. Look at the surge. So JP Morgan was rocking to the upside. So 168. And we are the share owner of JP Morgan, pretty close to new all-time high. So we will see. It goes with this Goldman, uh, nice search as well. This one, look at the rally. This is kind of like the same scale rally as this. And in October 2022, all the way to November 2022. And right now here, October 2023, we are at December 2000. So it's kind of like an interesting to see one year cycle forms pretty nicely with Goldman Sachs as well. So Bank of America, 43 cents up, good action there as well, Wells Fargo. Good price action. So this is a kind of like a nice bull flag. If it forms pretty nicely, we should see some kind of like a surge to 52 to 53. So another um, five to 10 percent is coming down the road. Moving on to gold miners, GDX lagging today. I believe they are uh, kind of like in, cho in choppy price action, but uh, more consolidation uh, can have a more price action to go. So uh, I should say higher prices coming, but traders are uh, to be careful and uh, I should say to be patient on this one because I would like to see something like this, a consolidation, then break out to the upside. GDXJ, the same pattern. This one is uh, nicely going up. So we are just uh, getting above this trend line, as you see here. This is a very, very important trend line. It goes back all the way to new all-time high coming down and we just break through. So this needs to have time to consolidate here, but when consolidation is done, we should see higher prices coming down the road. AEM, uh, but good action today as well, 14 cents up. New Mount is coming down 15 cents, but this one already broken above a resistance, a very, very key resistance, trend line, uh, head and shoulder, reverse head and shoulder. And I, th and I think uh, this one can go all the way up to 51, even to 54. So. Uh, that's going to be a good price action for new month as well. Franco Nevada, 61 cents up, not a bad price action. This one consolidating pretty nicely. So the next move is going to be 120 to 124. A gold barrack, um, one cents up, not a bad price action. Moving on to last sector for today, XLE, which is uh, coming along with crude price. Uh, so crude 2% to the upside, XLE is coming just 70 cents. Uh, which is a less than 1% to the upside. XOP, after a surge to the upside, uh, $2.18, not a bad price action. OIH, a good a price action, I should say, holding up pretty well. So OIH just broke above this channel. So this is a pretty nice price action. And if it holds above it, that's going to be a bullish sign for, for uh, uh, energy sector overall. XOP, which is Exxon, 23 cents up. However, uh, sellers took control a bit after like a uh, last hour of the session. Chevron dollar 36 cents up. So Chevron uh, triggers to the upside when I was in vacation. And unfortunately, I couldn't capture this. But you see that when, when this one is just getting to the upside, it's just reaping to the upside. This is kind of like a bullish wedge. Uh, still looking for a uh, negative price action, but seems like for now, Chevron has done a good job. So uh, getting back to 152. So we'll we take the benefit to Chevron for now. All right. I believe I covered everything. If you like this video, please smash the like button. Again, seasonality is bullish. So try to just uh, stay uh, with your family. There's nothing uh, basically in the chart uh, right now. Um, we should see some kind of like a low volume rally 
And uh, next week, when everyone is coming back from vacation, so we should see some real action is coming, especially second week of January, which everyone is back from vacation and uh, the real scenario is going to be there, which is going to be corrective move, I believe is going to start in second week, third week, and fourth week of January. So we'll see how it goes. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.